Assalamu alaikum. This is a microeconomics theory course directed to fourth year economics section. Let's move to optimization behavior of the producer in the long run and the optimal production choices. Relating to the optimizing behavior of the producer in the long run, we have basic assumptions. First one, the producer is rational. He aims to maximize his profits. Producer aims to maximize his profit, not his total output. Here we have to put in mind that we are in the long run, which means that all inputs are variable. So in order to produce a given level of output, we need different combination of labor and capital. And we assume that the producer knows the technology that could be used and he can uh, choose the optimal combination of labor and capital. Another assumption that the price of final goods and services is given and the prices of, uh, of inputs which are wages or rent are given. These are basic assumptions concerning the producer in the long run. And the equilibrium position of the producer in the long run, which we call it the profit maximizing behavior, could be achieved under three main scenarios. First one, when the producer is unconstrained, either by his budget or by the a given level of output. Second scenario, when the producer is constrained uh, constrained only by costs or constrained only by his budget. In such case, he should aim to maximize output. Third case, when the producer is constrained by a given level of output. So, in order to maximize his profit, he aims to minimize his costs. So the equilibrium position of the producer could be achieved through three main scenarios. First one, when the producer is unconstrained either by his budget or by a given level of output. Second scenario, when the producer is constrained only by cost or by budget. Hence, in order to maximize his profit, he will aim to maximize his output. The third case, when the producer is constrained only by a given level of output, in this case, profit would be maximized if he aimed to minimize costs. In order to get to the optimal production choices in the long run, we need the first to revise the production and cost in the long run. Starting with the production, we will revise what meant by isochronic curve, it's a slope, how to measure the slope, and what are the main characteristics of the curve and different shapes of isochronic curves. Second, we'll move to the elasticity of production, definition and measurement, and we'll get some application about uh, Cup-Douglas production function, what are the main characteristics of uh, these uh, functions, and how to measure the output elasticity uh, of Cup Douglas production function. In the long run, all the factors of production are variable, so in order to produce a certain level of output, the producer need different combination of labor and capital, and this is the concept of isochronic curve. It is a curve that shows different combination of inputs that produce the same level of output. Let's take the example in order to know how to draw the isochronic curve. Given the following data about various combinations of labor and capital, we call it um, different method of production. In order to produce a certain level of output, uh, Q equals 100 units. So, point A, point C, point, uh, point B are different combinations or methods of production um, that produce the same level of output. So, production is the same along uh, the curve moving from A to B imp imply that we um, use more labor and less of capital in order to produce the same level of production. So the isochronic curve to the curve that show different combination of labor and capital that produce the same level of output. 
The slope of I the quantum curve can be derived mathematically. First step, take the production function in the long run, where the total output depends on the size of labor and the amount of capital used. Our factors of production are variable in the long run. Here we have to remember that along the same isoquantic curve, the output produced is fixed. There is no difference between point A, B, and C in the amount of output produced. Second step is to take the total differential of the production function and set the, the total difference equals zero, which means that there is no difference in the level of output produced along the curve. The difference equals zero. Okay, this implies that partial derivative of output with respect to capital time the change in capital equals the partial derivative of output with respect to labor times the change in labor. Here, the partial derivative of output with respect to capital refers to the marginal productivity of capital, and the partial derivative of output with respect to labor is called the marginal productivity of labor. Rearrangement gives us the following um, formula, which is the slope of isochronic curve. It is the ratio of marginal product of labor to the marginal product of capital, which we call it the marginal rate of technical substitution. So the slope of either quantum curve equals the change in capital over change in labor. It's the same as the ratio of marginal product of labor to marginal product of capital. We call it the marginal rate of technical substitution. It is the rate at which labor can be substituted for capital to produce the same level of output. Why it is a negative sign? Because in order to get more of labor, we have to get or hire less of capital in order to maintain the same level of output. As long as output is fixed along the curve, so if we want to hire more units of capital of labor, we have to hire less or give up uh, some units of capital in order to keep the level of output fixed. Again, in order to use more units of labor, we have to use less units of capital in order to keep the level of output fixed along the curve. Okay, that's why we have a negative slope. And as we know that um, uh, in normal cases, the uh, isoquantic curve is convex, which means that the marginal rate of technical substitution is decreasing along the, the same isoquantic curve. So the slope of isoquantic curve measure the ratio of marginal product of labor to marginal product of capital. It is equal to the marginal rate of technical substitution, and it has negative sign because we have the same level of output along the curve. So in order to get more units of labor, we have to decrease capital in order to maintain the same level of output. The marginal rate of technical substitution is decreasing along the isoquantic curve because in normal cases, the isoquantic curve has a convex shape from the origin. Again, the isoquantic curve it shows different combination of labor and capital uh, that is that are used to produce the same level of output, or it is a locus of points of combination of factors of production along which the total difference in output equals zero. Uh, the main characteristics of isoquantic curve: number one, output is constant along the curve. There is no difference and output from one point to another point along the curve. Second, the higher the isoquantic curve, the higher the level of output. Third, the isoquantic curve is downward sloping. Why? Because in order to keep the output level constant, when we hire more units of one input, we have to use less units from the other inputs. That's why the isoquantic curve is downward sloping. Fourth, it is convex to the origin. Why? Because of diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution. As we use more units of labor, less and less of capital units will be given up. So, 
marginal rate of technical substitution is decreasing along the isoquantum curve. Here in the long run, uh, the output is governed by what we call it the law of return to scale. What's meant by the law of returns to scale? It refers to the rate at which output increases as a result of proportional increase in all inputs. Here we have three types of return to scale. Constant return to scale, increasing and decreasing return to scale. First of all, the constant return to scale refers to the case when uh, we um, increase all our inputs simultaneously by a certain proportion, the output increase by the same proportion. While increasing return to scale refers to the case when we increase our inputs by a certain proportion, output would increase by more than this proportion. Decreasing return to scale uh, refers to the case when uh, we uh, increase our input simultaneously by a certain proportion, output would increase by less than this proportion. Also, the isoquantum curve has a different shape according to the relationship between uh, the inputs, labor and capital. Uh, the normal case, uh, when uh, we have isoquantum curve um, convex to the origin uh, and the uh, marginal rate of technical substitution, uh, the slope is decreasing. In this case, uh, labor and capital are partially substitutes. Um, if labor and capital are perfect complement, here, um, in this case, they must uh, be used together in a fixed ratio and isoquantum curve have, uh, has the L shape and rate of technical substitution is zero, the slope is zero. The other case, uh, when uh, labor and capital are perfect substitutes, in this case, uh, we can produce by using labor only or capital only. And isoquantum curve are straight lines, which indicate that uh, the marginal rate, rate of technical substitution is constant. The slope is constant along the straight line. Okay, so um, isoquantum curve has different shape according to the relationship between labor and capital. If labor and capital are perfect substitutes, the isoquantum curves are straight lines indicating constant slope. And when labor and capital are perfect complement, the, um, in this case, they are uh, used in a fixed proportion or the labor and capital must be used together in a fixed ratio. In this case, isoquantum curves have L shape and um, indicating that uh, the slope is zero. Marginal rate of technical substitute in this case is zero. Uh, the normal case when labor and capital are partially substitutes, in this case, isoquantum curves are convex to the origin, which indicating a decreasing slope. Marginal rate of technical substitution is decreasing along the curve. What would happen if we have technical progress? What is the impact of technology on isoquantum curve? Here, if we have technical progress, the isoquantum curve will shift inward. What does it mean? It means the same output can be produced by using fewer amount of inputs. Generally, the impact of technology on, on the level of output is that technology could uh, produce the same output with lower inputs, or we could achieve higher level of output with the same inputs used. Okay, so when a producer adopts advanced technology, same output could be produced with, with lower factors of production, or higher output could be achieved with the same factors of production. Now turning to the elasticity of production, and we call it uh, output elasticity. It is the percentage change in the production of a good by a firm divided by the percentage change in inputs used for the production of that goods. Um, when we assume that we have only two factors of production, which are labor and capital, so we have output elasticity with respect to labor and that with respect to capital. Concerning the output elasticity with respect to labor, uh, it equals the percentage change in output over the percentage change in labor. In this case, equals the marginal productivity of labor 
time the reciprocal of average product of labor. By the same token, the output is tested with respect to capital. It is a percentage of change in output divided by the percentage of change in capital used for the production of that level of output. Uh, it equals the marginal productivity of capital times the reciprocal of average product of capital. Applying this on the type of uh, production function, uh, which is a cup Douglas production function, it takes the formula of this formula, where uh, Q represents uh, the output level, A, it is um, technology level, L, it is labor size, and K is capital, beta, it is the uh, output elasticity with respect to labor, and Alpha, it is output elasticity with respect to capital. Um, the main characteristics of the Cup Douglas production function are first, output elasticity is constant, equals to alpha for capital and beta for labor. And your third assignment is to prove that alpha represent the output elasticity with respect to capital and beta represents or measure it the output elasticity with respect to labor. This is your third assignment. Second characteristics of Cobb Douglas production function is that the summation of, uh, of alpha and beta uh, measured the return to scale. If alpha plus beta equals 1, we have constant return to scale. If alpha plus beta greater than 1, then in this case we have increasing return to scale. And if alpha plus beta is less than 1, we have decreasing return to scale.